Hello, can everybody hear me? Okay. So yeah, as uh, as Monica said, um, I'm with Make Fashion. Um, we started this uh, six years ago. Um, my wife, uh, another friend, and I, Chelsea Klukas, we um, we wanted to get people involved in wearable technology, and we didn't really even know what that was six years ago. Um, so we were going to host some workshops and do some different things, but. Um, we had an art gallery, so we thought it would be fun to do a fashion show. And um, we invited a bunch of designers, and those designers came with some crazy ideas. And we ended up doing a runway show, and then some of the pictures from that show went viral, and then we got invited to do shows uh, in several places, including Maker Fair and the Consumer Electronics Show, and it kind of just exploded. And I, I don't quite yet know why or how or how to repeat something like this, but it's been, it's been a, just kind of a crazy experience. And we've, done, we've now done over 50 runway shows all around the world. We've done shows all through Europe, through North America. Um, I don't know, I've probably done 15 shows in China. It's been, it's been a weird thing. My background, I grew up in a farm, and then I worked in technology, and now I run a fashion company. So you would think, how would that happen? Why, how does that even make any sense? And I've learned some things on the way. Let me just get my notes out here because you'd think if I'd learned them, I'd remember them. Innovation happens in unexpected places. And this is one of the most important things. It's one of the things I appreciate about maker community and about maker fairs is it brings all these diverse groups of people together. And there's such a crossover of knowledge that you just can't help but come up with new ideas. Um, uh, one of the things that I've learned as a farmer slash technologist slash fashion person is always be slightly out of your element. It's really healthy to, to be doing something that you're not comfortable with, you're not familiar with, because it means you're learning. It means you're challenging yourself. And that's critical to innovation. Listen to others. One thing I've learned is that there's always somebody, no matter who you're talking with, they know more than you about something. Right? Doesn't matter, anybody in this room, I can have a conversation with you, I can learn something from you. And you can learn something from me. That's a given, and it's something that I've learned that no matter who I work with, that there's, there's something that they teach me if I'm open to listen. The next one is always listen. Um, and, and always be willing to change your world view. So my, I, I've, when I started in this, as a technologist, as a farm boy, I thought fashion was extraneous. I didn't think fashion was really relevant in my life. And I have learned that fashion is about human expression. Fashion is about storytelling. And in some ways, I think it's more important than anything else I could be doing. So, let me get into the storytelling here. So, um, whoops, that's the wrong way. So this piece is interesting to me because this piece is called Gamer Girls. It was designed by uh, Team Phi in Calgary. Now I want you to know that I don't design, I, I am rarely involved in the design of these pieces. My goal is to build a platform for people to stand up, a literal platform, a runway for people to stand up on, show their, show their projects, show their passion, uh, explore, research, innovate. Now this, is, this was a, a team of designers and, and an engineer and the engineer is a female engineer who is, uh, feels that her culture, gaming culture, isn't represented well in the industry. So this is called Gamer Girls. It's beautiful, it's gorgeous, and you can play games against each other on each other's pieces. Right? How awesome is that? Fashion and gaming brought together. This is, uh, this is Nadine. Now Nadine is, she's really special to me. Uh, Nadine um, doesn't have legs and she's missing one arm at the elbow. When I first met Nadine, I felt like her experience was so different from mine that it was hard for me to enter into it. But in the middle and on the right there are pictures of her on our runway in the last runway show. And what's interesting is that she began as the prosthetics model for us, but now she's just a model. And what's interesting to me about fashion technology is that if you look at the girl in the middle, Tell me, do you see somebody with a disability or do you see somebody with a story to tell? With a story to tell, yeah. And you know what? 
we all have stories to tell. And for me, human expression and sharing our ideas and sharing who we are with each other is maybe one of the most healthy things that we can do as a society. So as a farm boy, you see why I, I value fashion. Now, this is another story. All these stories are close to my heart. But this is a story about Dolphin. She's a local um, uh, technologist in Shenzhen. Um, is Dolphin here yet? OK, if she rushes in, I'm going to bring her up into the stage. Uh, Dolphin and Teddy, one of our engineers, worked together in a project. And it was a last minute thing. She works for MakeBlock. Um, I wanted to create some robotic, or we wanted to create some robotic wings that would go on our runway. And, uh, and she was excited to try and do this because Dolphin, she, she works in a, a technology related field. She's, she's a female that is in a male dominated industry. And when we're going through this process, they made this amazing piece here. And when we were ready to go on the runway, we realized we were short one model. So I asked Dolphin if she'd participate. And remember, this is Dolphin, uh, you know, the, the technologist. And uh, she had never participated in anything like this, and she was brave enough to say yes. And we, we taught her how to walk down the runway, and she went out there, and she just owned it. And what was interesting to me is that Dolphin had spent most of her professional career trying to fit in with the men in her environment. And this was the first time that she was able to express herself both as a technology person and as a woman. And she wrote a, a post on, on WeChat about, about her feeling like she could be a woman for the first time in her career. And for me, fashion technology is allowing people to express who they are. And, and now she helps her company learn, um, develop women in STEM projects. So she's changing, she's assisting her company by being who she is. And I want everybody to, to understand that, that we all benefit from each other when we're able to express who we are to each other. Uh, these are a group of grade 11 students. They're 16 years old. They've never used technology out of their iPhone, besides their iPhone. And in a two-month period with working with us, developing this dress on the, run, on the left, they were able to learn 3D printing, they were able to learn basic electronics. They all know how to solder. They're the only ones in their school that know how to use the laser cutter. And they learn that inside their fashion class. So I love this idea that we can explore STEM initiatives through people's passions. Instead of pulling them out and having them to, you know, pulling people out of what they're interested in, if we can trigger people's learning through what they're passionate about, it was amazing to me what they brought to the table. I not only, not only did they learn something though, they taught me so much. And that's a really important part of this. This is Lauren. Um, I'm just gonna call Lauren and Ashley up here. They're our youngest designers. Um, they're 12 and 13. We started working with them when uh, they were eight and nine years old. Aren't they awesome? So, <laughs> so what, what is so inspiring to me about these girls is that they have developed six pieces for our runways. They've shown in three countries. Um, Lauren has spoke to the United Nations on the status of women. She's done a TEDx talk. They're, they're in China. They're, they're here showing this to you. And, and they're able to, uh, they've done all the programming for their pieces themselves. They did all the 3D modeling themselves. One day, Lauren was taking, uh, or, uh, I was talking to her about one of her pieces, and we were discussing ways that we could, we could do something. And I said, well, maybe if you laser cut the, the pieces out of your dress. And she's like, oh, I can use the laser cutter. And whoop. sure enough, she can use the laser cutter. One week later, she was laser cutting her dress, and she put it on the runway. Uh, oh, actually, that's actually a different piece. But she put it on the runway a month later. I, these girls, like when we were at X Factory, Ashley was helping me, <laughs> Ashley was helping me do some laser cutting. And in about, about 15 minutes after showing her, she was off using the laser cutter herself. What we're trying to do is lower the barrier for access to technology because when we, we find when we do that, it inspires people to be creative and, and they learn so much quicker. Thank you guys so much. I'm...
Uh, dolphin has just arrived. <laughs> Come on, Dolphin. Um, so Dolphin uh, was, uh, was the one that modeled the piece last year. And I just want to, you to hear from her about her story. Hi, 我英文不是特别好 呃，在Make 然后我就顺其自然地完成了这个任务 状态，然后站在这个这样一个舞台上，然后，呃，但是我觉得神奇的事情也就在那一天发生了，就是我走过来的时候会觉得，好像有一些什么地方变得不一样了。我那个时候我对上帝说了一句，I want to be a girl，因为我那天会发现我做了这么多年的，对，就是工作了大学毕业以后，呃，是这样的，我大学毕业之前是修了工业设计和计算机的生专业，毕业以后就是。有一些像我这样可能不太注重外表的这种女生，能够越来越关注科技，然后也也非常希望那些热衷于时尚的女孩子，在遇到像Make 然后也也非常希望那些热衷于时尚的女孩子在遇到像Make 能够爱上这种时尚科技类的东西，我相信在不久的将来，然后就是通过这种科技和时尚的这种嗯结合跟改变，能够让越来越多的人爱上科技。我是相信Make 有这种魔法的，对，谢谢大家。我最后还是让他亮一下，对，他还是可以这样的。好，就这样了。Thank you, Dolphin. I have no idea what she said. Um, but Dolphin's awesome. Give her a big hand. So the last story I wanted to tell is about Laura. Laura Dempsey was an architect. She came to one of our first Make Fashion meetings. During that meeting, I talked about wearable technology. And at the end of the meeting, she said that she felt the technology was beyond her. So I knew when she said that, that I said the wrong thing. So I assured her that I would work with her and help her um, beat or resolve any technology issues. And uh, within three months, she had made a piece. I, I helped her three times during a three-month period. She made a piece that was shown in our first fashion show. That was the piece that went viral. Uh, it got published in newspapers all over the world. She was invited to show at the Consumer Electronics Show. Um, it got, it got thousands of hits online. And this was the girl that said to me, the technology is beyond me. This was the piece that she developed. It was magical. It was, a, it was on a dancer, and the dancer would walk out, and she would move, she would, she'd walk out and stand still, and the piece would go dark. And then she moved her arm, and the arm would light up, and move the other arm, and then she erupted into movement. And there were people in the audience they were moved to tears by this experience. Remember, this is the person that said the technology was beyond her. Two years later, we were in Shaman, China, and she was working on her third piece. And I saw her working, doing, like sitting at the table. She's soldering. She's got her computer. She's doing some coding. 
and in walks one of the Chinese models, and she looks at her and says, you almost never see women doing this type of work. Laura looked up at me. We remembered that conversation that we'd had two years earlier. I took this picture. At that moment, I took this picture. Um, this, was the, this was the runway show that she was involved in in Shaman. She has three pieces in this runway show. This is her Facebook profile today. So she rem that moment was important for her. That moment was important for me. And the end of the story is that, is that Laura now works for a wearable technology company in Toronto. So she has become a leader in her industry in three years of just being brave and expressing her passions. And, and she is changing the world with the work that she does. So I'm going to get into the more of the tech side of things. Um, this is a technology adoption life cycle. The thing that I want to point out here is that the technology life cycle is collapsing. It's getting shorter, and it's changing the way all of us live. In my parents' and grandparents' lives, people could buy a piece of technology, and, and in 20 years, that same technology would be, still be usable. Today, we live in a different world. The bow and arrow had a technology life cycle of 45,000 years. Okay? The spinning wheel, 1,200 years. The smartphone is everywhere, and it was invented nine years ago. So we're moving to an era where things are being developed and going obsolete in five to 10 years, in, in two to 10 years. So it means that we have to be more adaptable, and we've got to more, be more agile. Here's something else. Uh, in 2020, the expectation is the wearable technology market will be 20 billion US dollars. That sounds like a lot. But what I find interesting is the fashion industry today is $3 trillion. Now, why is that? Why is the fashion industry worth two orders of magnitude more than the wearable technology industry? It's important because it's about storytelling. It's about human expression. The way we dress is the opportunity to make the first impact on somebody that you interact with. But it's deeper than that. With fashion technology, I think, I think fashion itself has been a bit subverted by brands. Everybody wants to be like somebody else. But with fashion technology, it gives us the ability to influence how we look. It gives us the ability to tell our own story. And I think that's really important. Now let's play a little game here. On the left, we have a bunch of sensors. On the right, we have a bunch of uh, areas of like verticals. You can pick any two or three things on the left and apply them to think something on the right. And I guarantee you, you will have invented a new wearable. This is how easy it is to be innovative today. We're entering in an era where everything is changing dramatically and quickly. And where does this lead? This is where it leads. So I, I want to have superhuman powers. I think that fashion technology and wearable technology is no less significant than changing the evolution of the human species. We will be different, a different species tomorrow than we are today because of augmented experiences and because of quantified self. That's why I think what I do is important. Now, there are some issues out there. I, I say it's a little bit like trying to build a boat using only car parts. The trouble with wearable technology and fashion technology is that humans are messy. They move, they stretch, they sweat. Technology, li technology likes none of that. So there needs to be advancements in material science and wearability and maintenance. There's creative barriers to entry. This is some of the things that we're trying to resolve. There are safety issues. Nobody likes to be wearing exploding batteries. And there's problem with supply chain integration because fashion companies don't understand how to build technology. And all of these things need to change. This is what we're trying to do. This is why I'm here. My goal is to help solve some of these problems. But I can't do it without you. This is the new kit that we're launching. It's called Stitch Kit. The idea is to make it so that in 15 minutes, you can go from science fiction to reality. You can plug in a few connectors, plug in a battery, do some drag and drop programming, and immediately you'll have something that you didn't know was possible 15 minutes before. The other part is you guys. This was taken at, our, at, the, at the Make Fashion Runway show at Shenzhen two years ago. None of this is possible without community. 
So I invite all of you to scan my QR code there. I'm on WeChat, Weixing. Um, and if you're interested, contact me. I am, we're, we want to work with people. We all benefit from learning from each other. Thank you guys very much. Thank you, Shannon. We're going to see if there are questions. Uh, Shannon, where can people find you if they want to ask you questions or? Weixing. Oh, so okay, and, Weixing. And we're, we're just out front. There's, we have a booth there. I have a QR code out there. If you see me, please ask me. I am really good at translating through WeChat, so don't think a barrier, language is a barrier. We've found our way past that before. Uh, Shannon 还有他的团队今天下午都会在Maker uh, Pro,我们前面的Maker Pro特展区 在那边有任何对他们有问题的朋友们可以到那边去找 Shannon and the Make Fashion Team. Thank you.